<laughs> You're live. Looking live. All right, all right. Me. I don't know. Somebody else will have to follow comments because I can't do both. Uh, let's see if I remember how to do this. Ah. There we are. Hey. Ring flash? Very good. What's up, everybody? We got, we're here at the three-legged goat. Uh, I would show it around, but I don't want to change my cameras. We got Mark, Steven, Jim, Kira, Chris, Clara. Yay. And we're all drinking. We're having a good time. Wish y'all out here. But for those of y'all watching in virtual land, well, y'all have fun. Hope y'all have something to, to drink along with. I have a uh, Rognus Hefeweizen, very excited about. Uh, the person that got me into home brewing made that. So Rognus Brewery here in Pflugerville. Uh, used to run Austin Homebrew Supply. It's really good. Uh, I started going there when I was 20, but don't tell him that. <laughs> he would ply me with wares and then extract money from me. So we had a good time. Um, so yeah, this is episode 32 of Josh Says Mean Things. It's also the three-year anniversary of Josh Says Mean Things. So we started in we started in the pandemic, March 2020, and now we're three years later. We're still doing this. So uh, this is people send me photos and we say mean things about them. So yeah, let's see. Is that gonna give me Lightroom? Yeah, enough of me. Let's take a look at Lightroom and let's talk about your photos. All right, first one from ooh, laptop is doing a lot of things. Um, what's that? From, hey, John. What's up? Virtual land. Um, so this is from our good friend Brian Nixon. Can y'all see that okay? Yeah. Um, this is a band called Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. They're a punk band uh, made from people from like uh, Lagwagon and Less Than Jake. Um, <laughs> I recommend some of their live albums. Um, my favorite being, ooh, because we're on battery power. Um, they, one of their live albums is from a bar mitzvah. Um, they played a kids' bar mitzvah, and it's a really fun punk album. I, I recommend it. So, um, they also have the best cover of um, "Me and Julio" down by the schoolyard. So, I don't know if you like that song. It's a really great cover. So, there we go. Why am I not getting battery power? Um, anyway, so Brian sent me this photo, and he said, "Man, I uh, I didn't like the stage. I didn't like the lighting, but I'd really like the band. What do I do?" Who? tough right if you look look at the hot spot here you have no control over this right I, I'm not saying this is any of Brian's fault but um, you know it's such a uh, oh thank you Jim um, good catch I have all the cables running around me I look like I'm uh, on life support here with all the cables running out of me right now um, but this is hard right you, you want to shoot this cool live show it's a band you really love um, you have a great moment of the of the singer everybody's wearing the cool Hawaiian leopard print shirts um, and the lighting is just missing his face completely. You have no control over that, right? You're there for the moment, and the light just fails you, right? Um, and so, the, you know, the drummer, if we look at the drummer, is like four stops brighter than the bass guitarist over here. And then the lead singer, who's got some like George Jones, Elton John's looking glasses, right? It's hitting his midsection, but not on his face. Like, that's just, whew, what do you do, right? Um, it's why you see a lot of music photos end up black and white <laughs> because the white balance is off on every bulb. It's hitting different people at different, right? You, you wouldn't set this up if you had your choice, but what do you do with it? Um, and so for me, um, this hot spot is kind of my first solve uh, because it's, just, it's taking away from the guy, right? So let's take a look at what we did just so we can kind of talk through. Um, I, and let me show you what I did as well, uh, just to try to tone some of that down, mainly radial. Right, so radial filter right here, just to bring down that exposure. And then all the band members' faces were kind of on the same uh, latitude. I will call it latitude. And so we could bring up a stop across their faces, because that's always what we want to see, right? Somebody playing the band, we want to see faces, we want to see hands, we want to see attitude. Um, and so for me, bringing up that and taking this down um, really shifts where your eye starts to go, right? So when we take a photo, and we're always there to talk about, you know, we want it to be good for the viewer. As a photographer, what do we want to show the viewer to make it interesting? And so for me, this guy's face is more interesting than the hotspot on the jacket. Um, and so really it's just a radial. And then for the color, I did a, a white balance off his jacket because it's a roughly white jacket. Um, and so I white balanced off that and then tweaked it a little bit. But if you look, negative 40 temp, negative 40 tent. 
uh, just to get rid of some of that red. Uh, brought down some of the highlights. Um, and then, oh, I did not color grade. I thought I did. Um, just using that white balance just to try to get rid of some of those ugly, ugly color lights. I know that Kira and I were talking last week about shooting in hotel conference rooms. And I want to maim and hurt the people who set up lighting in a lot of those rooms because it's, it's pockets of light. And then our, our task as the photographer is like, oh, go ahead and get it brightly lit, like open and airy candids in a cavern. And it's such a hard task. We're using a lens that opens the F2. We're shooting at like 10,000 ISO and we're barely getting a shutter speed to freeze the action. Um, and so it's really hard in situations like that. Like I think a lot of times too, if you can learn how to shoot in these situations and get something, when you when you go and shoot the bigger bands, the bigger names, the bigger places, it's so much easier. Like when I first started shooting weddings, terrible venues, the lighting was bad, and we had to learn how to overcome that. And then when we got to the good places, it was like, oh, well, this is easy. We had other stresses going on, but we didn't have to fight the lighting as much. Uh, but it really surprises me, especially hotel conference rooms, and I see Kira nodding over here. Even like really high-end conference centers, the lighting is absolutely terrible. It's a bunch of pin spots. Like, why would you do this? Like, it's so difficult. Um, and this is a the situation there. So I think Brian did the best he could. He was super close, shooting with the wide angle, got close, got the moment. So there you go. Good shot, Brian. Thanks for submitting. Uh, yeah. Here is Kira, as we're just talking about her. I love this engagement shot. Um, it's Cathedral of Junk. Am I correct? Is that where it's at? Yeah, Cathedral of Junk. Um, and we're shooting, there's a couple things going on, right? We're shooting into reflective surfaces, right? So one here, two there, right? We have a secondary reflection. Good job hiding yourself, right? When you're shooting direct reflection like this, it's always, where am I, right? Try to avoid that. You're somewhere in these beads, I'm guessing. No, I was like off to the side. Off to the I side a little bit? Like here, and like, I had to like shuffle them and be like, okay, now just go a little further. <laughs> little little yeah, yeah. Move a little bit, move a little bit, move a little bit, move a little bit. Okay, right there. Um, but what I like too is that we have, we have a foreground, we have a middle ground, and then we have a background. So even in this reflection, we have depth, right? We have different depths that we're working out, which is also really important for good landscape photos as well, right? We always want that depth. Uh, foreground, middle ground, and background. Right? We don't want just a sunset. We want to do something with the sunset. Um, the other thing I like about this is they're a nice warm color, and then the reflections are very cool. And so you also have that warm, cool contrast going on. Um, I like that a lot as well. My only critique here is I'm losing some of his face. I would have liked him to be like two inches more that way. Um, you can't see my hands, but two inches more to his left, uh, just so I can see a little bit more of his face. Um, and maybe have her turn a little bit so she's not, you know, hips forward to the camera. Just slight turn and get a little bit more. So have him come out just a little bit where they're turned in more like a V toward each other. Uh, that can really help. Um, but, yeah, I really like this photo. It's one of those you're like, oh, yeah, of course you submit that one. I have nothing to say about it. So um, what did Josh do? No, it was really cool. No, 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 it's good. There, there's another one of yours coming later. So all I did was kind of accentuate here. Um, there is two linear masks. So there's one coming from the top left here. Uh, you can kind of see it coming that way. Uh, I darkened it and I gave it a lot more blue. Um, so I gave the left-hand side of our frame blue. Um, I kept the orange where it was. And then for the second one, I um, added, I don't know if you can see this, but I added kind of this sea green to it to bring out the green in this junk back there. So now not only do we have depth, not only do we have some warm cool, but now we have blue, orange, and green kind of working as complementary colors all together just to give it a little bit more cohesiveness. Um, but that's, that's literally all I did to it. I don't, I don't think there was anything else really done. Um, no color grading, nothing like that, I don't think. Yeah, nothing else done. Um, I played with a little texture, didn't really add anything to it, so just left it alone. Um, I love reflections. We're going to see some more of those, and I love depth, and I love having those colors work together uh, to really kind of bring out something more. So good shot. All right, this is from our good friend Jess. Uh, she just went and shot, I think her stepdad just made Colonel, if I, if I am remembering this. Um, kind of a big deal. So here she is shooting. Um, this is the raw file, the Lincoln Memorial, great reflection. There's a theme today. Apparently it was reflection month. I don't know. That's what we're going with. 
Um, so here's her edit, um, which I think is really good, right? If you notice, F4, mm, I don't know how he feels about his nose being there. Um, you know, it might be nicer to be there, just depending on how well. We don't need to see boogers. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to see that. But just a little bit of the hat, a little bit of the glasses. You know, I think the other thing here, too, is it's a cool reflection, but is it a selfie? Is it a portrait? Like... So if it's more about the person taking the photo and this, cool. If it's more about the person looking, yeah, I would, I would come back because this kind of identifies that mustache is a good identifier. Uh, but I might do a little dodging and burning in this general area here. Um, you know, I think that four is fine. Uh, that reflection, you're going to get a lot of that depth of field anyway. Um, so it's fun. The idea was right. It's a gray kind of overca uh, overcast day. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. It's fun. Um, you know, it's good. Maybe let yourself see it too. Man, pull, pull the camera off the side. Let us see a little bit more of you. Um, here's the photo. I oh, that's not the right one yet. We're coming to that one. This is her other submission. Um, and I'm actually shooting this person's wedding coming up in a couple weeks. So that's Blake. Hi, Blake. Um, I love this. This is uh, from the bachelorette party. Uh, she said it was two light wands and window light. Um, and it's just, it's super fun. It's got these kind of like, um, I realize now that these uh, out of focus highlights are actually just brushes uh, because when I looked at the raw file, they're not there. And so I feel tricked. I feel tricked. Um, but I, I love this. I love the expression. I love that the hands, we have the ring. It's a bachelorette. That's what they're excited about. We have pink. We have blue. It's a wedding. Babies, right? All of those things. We got a white dress. We have out-of-focus highlights in the front. Right, there's just a lot of fun going to it. It's a very fun moment. And I think that's very much conveyed by this photo. Um, if I wanted to show a photo of somebody having fun at their bachelorette photo party, it would look a lot like this, right? This would be exactly what I'd be going for. Um, let me show you the raw file without any edits. If we look left to right, um, we can see those pink. We can see that blue. We can see a little bit of that out of focus here. Um, but you also see that Jess did some Photoshop work or some Lightroom brush work to add those in. And so all I did, I was a little surprised about, uh, it was a little bit underexposed to start with. It was also pretty dark. If we look at the ISO, 8,000 ISO, nothing wrong with that. Um, and you were shooting at 2.8, right? So at 100th of a second. Hey, it's a dim place, okay? Not a big deal, but I love this expression. I love the hand. Um, it's just a really fun moment. Um, I, when I first viewed it, I was like, oh, cool. That I thought all of these out of focus highlights were working together. I thought they were the same. And I realized that the green one and the white one were uh, added. So I'm giving you uh, two shakes of the finger for tricking me. Good job. Um, but yeah, it's just a fun, fun photo. Um, I went a little bit more high key with it. Uh, a little cooler. Um, I took a little bit of the warmth out of it just to bring in some of the blues. Um, and I brought down the highlights just to protect. Her skin was like two stops darker than the pink on that veil. That white veil is so hard. Um, if you're adding color to things with like light wands, I would recommend gray, not white, right? And this is a white, you can't change what she's wearing, but that this is one of the reasons that that white gets so bright, it, it gets brighter than the skin tone, and it kind of pulls away from where we want you to look. Uh, but super fun, love it, uh, good stuff. All right, Jim, we're coming for you now. We're coming for you. Um, again, another shot at 8,000 ISO, two in a row. Um, interesting settings, 8,000 ISO, F20, five seconds. Why F20? getting a lot of light from the lightning so i was having a hard time trying to balance it to depending on where it was at at the time when i was taking the picture like, it was too much lightning i was getting so much light it was actually getting the actual way down to two volt okay so, so i kept bumping up the f stop to get it out okay so we could have also brought the iso down even with the the f stop at 26 mil f8 f11 you're going to end up with depth of field anyway there's no you know, the difference between F11 and F20, depth of field at 26 mil isn't great. So just to give yourself a cleaner, a little bit cleaner file, you probably could have shot that at like 1600 ISO at like F11 and still make it quieter. Uh, I think five seconds is a good choice. Um, yeah, I try to do like two to five seconds for lightning. I think those are good choices there. 
Um, and you kind of went with a black and white desaturated look. I did the same thing. I kind of like how you had some warm in the center and some cooler on the outsides. I like the panoramic cut, um, the crop. I always think that's a good one. Lightning here, lightning there, lightning there. I, the trees at the top kind of take away a little bit. Um, I went with a different crop just to get rid of those, those trees at the top. Um, just a different vibe, just a different crop. Um, just a different, it's not, one's not right, one's not wrong. It's just, just to see what it would look like. Um, I kind of like your crop better. Um, maybe Photoshop out these trees at the top just to give kind of more of that, uh, the vibe across the top. Um, I will say when I make black and white conversions, I, in Lightroom, I don't use right here where it says treatment black and white. I don't use that one. I tend to just take saturation down to 100. I feel like it gives me more control later. I feel like the black and white in Lightroom is a little too constrictive of what it allows me to do with white balance and what it allows me to do with different saturations. So sometimes by doing it this way, I can change the white balance and, and bring back some of the feel of like red filters, green filters, and blue filters to black and white. And if I, but if I go just to black and white, I don't get that same flexibility. Um, and so I tend to do saturation minus 100 because then I can still change the white balance. But if I go to black and white in treatment, I don't get that. Just, I, I, I didn't use black and white because I didn't know the button was there. You didn't use black and white what? I didn't use the black and white button because I didn't know it was there. So I, I, just, <laughs> I, I was just... <laughs> yeah, most people don't know it's there. And honestly, it's not great anyway. So I don't, I don't recommend it. I, I can make this have that blue tone by changing the white balance. Or I can, I can change it by going like crazy warm. And it'll give me different responses to the colors. And if I go to black and white, I kind of lose some of that. So... Eh, something to think about. Again, not right, not wrong. Just another way to process it. Um, I did bring up my whites a lot just to make that lightning really pop. Um, and then I wanted to keep the trees a silhouette, so I darkened the blacks, darkened the shadows, you know, whatever. And I added some clarity. I don't know that that really added anything. I don't know. I don't know that that's better. Maybe a little bit less clarity. I've, I used to use a lot of clarity. A lot. Too much. I've honestly started putting negative clarity into most of my photos as a global adjustment and then just adding it very small amounts in very targeted areas for where I want it. Instead of making it a global adjustment, my general for presence now was like texture plus five, clarity minus five. And then I'll add in five or 10 here or there just where I want it, just to make that more of a contrast pop. So, um, Let's, th let's, let's, let's look at military photos now, because y'all both have some. So this is a really fun photo from Steven. I hate saying that. He keeps submitting good photos. I really want to say more mean things about him. I don't like this crop. I think the crop could be better. Um, what I, what, when I saw this, I really love the, the yellow, the red. Um, I would have liked to have seen more blue in the sky. Um, but this is a great file to start with if we look at these prop. Um, and the smoke has this really cool motion effect and the, the prop has the motion effect and those two together really get that sense of speed even if it wasn't flying 500 miles an hour it feels very fast All right it might have been flying very slow but it feels fast so one of those tricks is the faster you want something to feel shoot slower the slower you shoot the faster it feels um, f1 cars for instance you shoot around a hundredth of a second you would think you'd want, oh, they're going 200 miles an hour. I'll shoot them at 8,000th of a second. But then they just look parked on track. And so shooting things like this where you're panning with it at a slower shutter speed is the way to go. I love that we have detail of the guy flying. Um, I think that's really fun. Um, yeah, I, I really like the yellow. I really like this. I feel like there's a little bit too much room on the white, uh, on the right, uh, versus the tail with seeing all that smoke. Um, and so for me, I, I'm going to fix the things I just said. Um, and so I went with the 16 by 9 crop because you had all that detail in the smoke flying past. The other thing I did was I took that file and I kicked it so it made it feel like it was flying more at an angle going up um, instead of flying kind of across. Pretty close, but it's just a little more tilted up to give it a little more dynamic flying up. Um, I did select sky brought that down a whole lot this was a fast edit uh but select sky uh and i killed that i took the temp minus 87 <laughs> made it really blue and i darkened it 
Um, and I did that because I want the yellow, the blue, and the red to be the primary things that you saw. Um, this is just a quick edit, but just to, to illustrate what I was talking about, um, I think you know those are the prime, you know, some primary colors: yellow, red, blue, um, and really make those pop out. I brought the highlights down, brought the shadows up, just like I bet you did, and I brought the vibrance way up. Then I played with luminance a little bit to make things brighter and darker. I use the luminance a lot. The other thing I did to really increase that warm, cool contrast is is color grading by adding warm in the midtones, warm in the shadows, blue in the highlights. What was the highlights? The sky. And so this allows me to really fine tune the color of the sky as I want it. I can make it a little more teal, I can make it a little more purplish. And so by color grading, I, I feel like I have a little bit more control than just white balance or just tint. So, but I think this crop, because you had that smoke, this field more naturalistic. And if you look, it kind of makes a triangle. Ooh with um, you know across from this line going up makes a kind of a triangle from here to here and that gives us a little bit more compositionally strength so, but great photo uh, the reason this one it, it was a good capture to start with and when you have a good capture to start with you can push your files further in post um, I don't I don't always shoot for perfect exposures when I'm not shooting but I want to get the best data I can so that I know I can push it as far as I can in post. That's always a good goal. All right, here's another war shot. All right. Does that, does that feel right? Is he shooting left eyed? Right eyed. Is it? Yeah, okay. It just, it looks a little weird to me. I don't know why. I didn't notice it the first time. Um, so this is at where? Where's this at, Jim? Blue Bonnet Air Show? Cool. Um, shooting blanks, I hope. Um, so this has that like vintage feel for sure. Um, and so I love I love the the muzzle velocity going off here and seeing that flame. Like I, that, yeah, that's great, right? Um, shooting with your seventy to two hundred, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, I was. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So pretty close. Um, and when I saw this, I, I kind of wondered where his legs went. Um, if you look down, uh, where does legs go? Uh, but then I saw with the crop why you did what you did. Um, but that was I like the linear kind of that that cinematic vibe, right? That 16 by nine or even even wider. I like all the greens here, right? We have all the greens against that that orange muzzle, um, and so I think that tone is is good. Um, I would have liked to have seen maybe just a hint of detail in the sky here, um, but and I, I I probably would have not shot at quite these settings f14 and 180th. I know why you did. It. I asked you earlier. You're shooting planes and looked down and saw this. Totally get that. Um, you know I think f8. You know you could have gotten a little more shutter speed, but only and maybe a little bit more separation off that background. Everything's pretty sharp here. And just a little bit more isolation of subjects with a little bit more wide open aperture could do good. I like that his head isn't really above the horizon. It's not bisected by the horizon. Um, and so that's good too, right? That's always something to look out for is where does that horizon cross our subjects so that we, we don't get weird lines going through their head. So I think that was... shooting at a faster shutter speed, would I be able to get as much of the muscle velocity? Yeah, because it's so fast. Okay. Yeah, it's such a fast velocity, but I like it's well toned, right? It's it's captured well. It's not blown out, and so that's good too. So the right exposure. Um, I didn't get this, even though I was shooting the same thing. Yeah. So what, for those of you who didn't hear, Stephen was sitting right next to him when the shooting didn't get it. I find that when I go on like photo walks or like group shoots, I'm always amazed that. We'll go back and look at each other's photos and be like, where would you, where'd you get that at? Where'd you get that? And literally we were next to each other the whole time. And it's, it always comes down to the artist. It always comes down to the artist's vision. And we see different things. We, we have different lenses on, we have different post, post processing. And I think that's a great thing. Like I really, it, it really makes me happy. We always think that like, oh, it's all been done. All our photos are going to look the same. And it's never the case. It's literally never the case that we get the exact same looking photos. So that makes me happy. So I went with a little bit looser crop from the raw file, um, just to, I don't know. And then I tried to tone it so that it felt like a photo taken from the 70s. 
I was trying to mimic kind of like a 70s era film. Um, I added magenta and just a little bit of magenta in my shadows, kind of a yellowish tone, like an older file might have in the highlights, and then uh, some green right in my, in my mid-tones there. So color grading, mid-tones, shadows, highlights, and all we're doing is putting colors in those zones, right? So if we divide a photo into three zones, you know, the darkest part, the middle part, and the, and the brightest part, we can add color to those zones, and then we can do things like shift the, the balance of it more to red, we could shift the balance more to yellow. Um, but in this case, I just I was going for more of a, a vintage feel. I didn't want it to be super sharp. So again, I, I took out a little bit of saturation. I took out some dehaze. Um, I brought down the highlights just to keep it a little bit more flat. I didn't add any contrast. And in fact, I subtracted contrast just to give it more of that flatter feel. Um, I will say that I tried to use the um, uh, spot healing to, for all these light towers behind. And Lightroom did a terrible job. I will give you an example here. Let's try to get rid of the stick coming out. And let's see what it does. Oh, look, it gave me a white stick. Thanks, Lightroom. So why do I still use Photoshop? For this type of thing, getting rid of light poles, getting rid of those. Lightroom works sometimes for this. Yeah, why, why do I want a white stick? I, I don't know. Anyway, um, thanks, Lightroom. Um, but I, I, I gave it a little bit of looser crop because I wanted to see that he was standing on something uh, just to give the viewer kind of where his feet might be. Uh, or I would have cropped up even higher, maybe at his belt. Uh, the original I felt was just kind of a weird place to crop his legs. Um, there's, you know, a truck blocking view, so I get it. But I took, I, I took my crop because I was trying to not cut people in half. Mm -hmm. I know that was a bad thing, and I couldn't find a good crop that... Yeah, I like this way. guy's hand on his head. I think that's a really good one. I liked, I liked this guy's reaction. Um, I liked having his reaction in there. Um, in any photo, there's always the action, and then we're looking for the reaction as well. And so the, the person giving the reaction is telling how we should feel about the action. And so by having that in there, you know, I don't know if it's better, but it just gives us a little bit more of the story. Is so. it a better story even though I'm him? No. Okay. Yours, yours is also good. I kind of like that in yours, it's the only face is the guy shooting. Um, I, for me, it was more about um, giving his feet room to stand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if you look at the original, it's a pretty close crop from <laughs> what the original file was. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's why we cropped it the way we did, because there's buildings and things we can't control. Um, and so we crop. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Uh, this one's from John. Uh, this was shot at the PCU weekend that Precision Camera put on. Uh, this is Kinsey, um, and it's a fairy workshop. I'm guessing she's wearing wings in the background. Um, and she, they use two light tubes to light this. Um, the hard part about fairy portraiture is this looks like it was taken at about 2 in the afternoon. Um, and that background is so much brighter than those light tubes can hope to illuminate. Um, and so s something like this taken at seven o'clock at night or eight o'clock at night is going to give a very different feel where we can, where we can control that ambient more and let those light tubes come up in brightness. But right now those tubes trying to compete with the sun, it's just, it's good for learning, but it's, it, you wouldn't want to do that if that was like the shoot you were getting paid to set up just because it's so hard to. You just can't control the ambient. The ambient's so much brighter that those light tubes, there's no way that they're going to overpower the sun. They're just, they're not bright enough and they'll, they'll never be bright enough. Um, even, even with like big, big strobes, it would be hard to under, to under expose the sun enough to get these colors in. It's just, it's super hard. Um, I just wrote a post about shooting trail runners and at 8 AM, I was already at full power on my lights and I have big lights, eight, you know, 600 watt lights. And I was already at the limit of, of what I could, could do at six or eight feet with lights. So that, that's kind of the tough part. I do like the soft feel. Uh, I'm guessing we have like a pink or red light from above, a blue light from underneath. And it gives you that nice clamshell over and under. And so it does a good job of kind of making it feel soft because there's no hard shadows. Um, and so for the subject, and especially the catch lights, like you can see that, that light under the eye, 
I love those catch lights. Like that looks really good. Um, it's kind of a fun fairy-ish twinkly add addition to it. I would have maybe brought that red just a little bit so that we got a red bar in the catch light as well. Bring her chin up just slightly and you catch the red and the blue and that'll add more sparkle and more fairy, quote unquote, to the, the catch lights in the eyes. Yeah, what do you say? Middle of the day, disc golf course. Yeah, I know exactly where it was. I'm guessing piece. Yeah, I, I have a feel. I, I know where this is, but. Um, um, like right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably ambient. Yeah, that'd be my guess. Um, I tried to play with this file and I did a very poor job and I hit reset. I was so mad with my edit. Um, so let's try to do a live edit right now and see if we can make it work better. Um, so first off for me, I'm always picking color profiles my first, um, just to see like what works better. I don't know. Let's try modern four. I don't know. Just to give me something, right? I try to bring my highlights down all the way. And even then, we still have this brightness here. And in fact, if we underexpose the file completely, it's, it's just, there's not much you can do. Now, this is from a workshop. It wasn't in your control, completely understand. Um, but yeah, that's hard. The other thing I would say is in this situation, the red and blue are, are difficult because so much of the ambient is, is oranges, yellows, and greens. Um, and some of that is that reflecting light. And so we're getting two different color lights, right? Our lights are red and blue, ambient's yellow and green, a little bit of orange. And so it's very hard to correct for both of those, right? So if I try to take some of the red out of her face, the green and yellow go kind of nuclear, right? I'm, I'm playing with the tint, getting rid of red. That green goes really crazy. If I cool it down and now she looks right, but now my background looks very difficult. And so again, I'm fully aware this is at a workshop. I get all that. Um, if we select background, let's see how this works. You know, I would want to, I'd want to make it try to match her, right? I'm trying to match my lighting with ambient lighting. Um, I'm also outputting the HDMI and running off a laptop. Okay. So we have that. And so, you know, I would try to add not green, right? So we'll add red to the background to try to match more. Oof. And then, yeah, we're getting back to that ambient looking right. Um, you might even add color. Um, I don't know. Go, you know, it's fairy. You, you have license to get weird with it. And I would just look for the color I'd want to add that would feel like this photo was all with the same lighting, right? We'd call that motivated lighting, where the light on the subject, even though it's artificial, it looks like it's coming from the ambient. Does that make sense as, as motivated lighting? And so maybe if I go like full red, right? And then I can come back to my complete file and I'll take that red out even more. Ah, uh, see, I don't know. It's tough. Maybe that's a little better. And then just take vibrance up to 100. No. <laughs> that's a bad choice. Um, you know, bringing highlights down, bringing shadows maybe a little up. Yeah, that's, it's, this, is, this is a tough pull. Um, I really struggle with trying to find the balance of this photo. Um, also, I have fairy wings here. You know, a, a way around this, if she pulls those wings out if possible and block more of the ambient, um, block more of the background, get lower and shoot against. So as the sun hits grass, especially without a polarizer, it gets very reflective. And so shoot up against the sky so you don't get, you're not getting the sun hitting off the ground right so if you get low that might be a different angle to where you're not getting some of those blown outs i don't know i'm just spitballing i'm not saying there's a right or wrong either way this is a tough situation to light when in doubt right just take all the color out and just <laughs> minus <laughs> minus 100 <laughs> saturation right like i don't know we'll, we'll figure something out but um the tough situation right it's a lot of times when we're setting up shoots time of day matters right time of day absolutely you know with, with light painting right 10 o'clock at night light painting way easier than two o'clock in the afternoon light painting right you're fighting so much ambient um and so you know i've certainly struggled i've done shoots from you know the client is like we're doing it at this time and i had no choice in the matter and trying to figure out things that work ooh, it's tough right now this class they were using the light tubes it was part of the class and so i i know what was going on but yeah, that, that's, a, that's a tough situation, so. 
Um, I, I like the softness. I like that there's depth. I like that her hands are coming at me, right? So it's not all linear, right? We have some depth, right? That turn sideways. Um, I'm kind of curious how Kenzie was to shoot because she's on my list of people to photograph. So, yeah. All right. This is from Chris, who's sitting right across from me, and his wife, who's also sitting right across from me. Oh, boy, this is fun. What happened to her foot? What happened to her foot? Where'd it go? She's a pirate. She's a peg leg now. Um, I think the thing I struggle with still the most in photography is dynamic posing. I'm really good at lighting. I'm really good at talking to clients. All that's good. I still struggle with posing. To me, this photo still suggests, well, two parts. One, a little bit of posing, um, but also composition. We'll see in the, in the raw file that there's a lot more room on the left-hand side of this background that we could have shifted the model where the foot, the foot gets cropped because you ran out of background. And so we could have shifted the model over where there was room to shoot against the background. I'll show you. She only speaks Russian. <laughs> she only speaks Russian. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Even better. Even better. See, there's always a hidden part to the story. I'm like, you should have done this in abstract. <laughs> in reality, the model speaks Russian. Okay. Well, all right. You got me there. Um, but for posing, a couple things. Um, elbows locked. Try not to do, right? We want elbows slightly bent. Um, hands softer, more spread out. So instead of closed, a little spread out. Toes, arched, right? That, instead of that heel down, arch that toe, flexes the calf, looks a little better. Um, just things to think about. Um, the shoulder kind of blocking that, that, that jaw line, eh, whatever. Um, could be good. Um, I know you don't like painting, so you, you need a pose that she can hold for, what was your exposure, like 10 seconds, probably. So I, I, trust me, I understand the limitations. Um, I've shot in this, I'm assuming this is in y'all's living room. I've shot there. Um, it's, you know, you, it's hard because there's only so much room to back up. Um, the other thing I would say is there's light kind of on the, on the, the floor here. Um, and so I try to disguise my lights firing. Something I've talked to you about a lot is like a negative gradient on the bottom so that you don't see that the flash fired. The light just looks like it was there without it reflecting off that background. Um, I do really like this pink and yellow. I think that's fun. I went ham on this photo, just just so you know. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of the things that we did. Oh, are we crashing here? Oh, well. I forgot where I was. That's all right. It's there. Whatever. Um, so I went crazy on this. So first crop, I didn't crop a whole lot. I don't think a little bit, right? So you have like three feet this way. You could have moved her two or three feet, right? And then you could have, the hard part is that the light painting goes further than your background. Yeah, that's tough. I get it. Um, I went with modern four. So Lightroom actually hides some of its presets under camera profile. In this case, I went to modern four. Um, the other thing I did, I did a lot of stuff here. My white balance, I went very cool because I wanted that blue background to go even bluer. I shifted out of the red, minus 44, that's a lot. Um, I cranked the vibrance up to 25, also a lot. But here's where it gets crazy. Um, I did color grading in tone curves. What does that mean? So instead of just using tone curves as a tone curve, you can also use it for colors. So I can shift into red or out of red, but I can shift out of red highlights and add red shadows. Same with green. I can go up in green, down in green and highlights, and then down reds here. So before they had color grading in Lightroom, I used this as my way to color grade, especially when I was using very a lot of light colors, it allowed me to, to really shift, but I found that it gave me smoother results than, than just the HSL panel would allow me to do. Uh, because it's a curve, it's not using numeric, um, but I could really play with this. And that's how I'm getting this like really saturated blue here. Um, the other thing I did was a big two, two gradients, one a, one a radial, one a linear, to really darken the floor. Uh, and that way you don't see that the light fired to illuminate her. 
So I. How would you do that in real life? So uh, at Crate Grid on the softbox, I'm guessing a softbox was used? Okay, so at Crate Grid, or what we'd call a flag. So in between the light and the subject, you could put a black piece of cardboard to prevent the light from hitting the background, but allowing it to hit the person. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so you could flag, we would call it flagging the light. So you still want that big soft light, but you don't want it to hit some areas. First one would be egg crate grid, right? So think of an egg crate grid. Um, think of a modern house and your window was like a three by four softbox, but your, your walls are only like six inches, right? So the light that comes through that window, very wide, right? Now in a castle, same three by four opening, same softness of light, but because the walls are three feet deep, it, it's a soft channel of light. So that's what an egg crate grid does is it, it keeps the softness, but instead of it going everywhere, it goes in a channel. Does that, does that make sense? And then if it's still hitting the floor, you put in between the light and the subject, you put a grid, uh, you put, um, like a giant, what you could do a barn door, but literally you could just do cardboard, right? Or another sheet of roll paper and it would, you know, and it would prevent the light from hitting there. Yeah, so that that's a way to do it. Um, that won't cause a it won't get a, a hard line doing that. No, because it's a softbox. The light's coming from many angles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So without these, I'll show you what I mean. So see how bright that floor is. So we took it out there. Same, and I took it down even more. So not only all that, again, color grading, right? I really wanted to play with that blue. I really wanted this blue to pop. So that's a lot of color grading for me. That's very far from the center. So mid-tones, kind of tealish blue, royal blue in the shadows, yellow in the highlights. Yeah. Hello, Miguel. Hello, Miguel. And then again, luminance. I brought up the reds in her face, the oranges. So skin is always red and orange, almost always. So I brought up the skins and then I brought down the blues and purples even more because I really wanted that contrast. Um, now, if you really wanted to, to get crazy, you could go into Photoshop and like clone all that out. That, that would be not fun. Not fun. You could. I wouldn't. I, I don't, ain't nobody got time for that. It would probably take me five minutes. Yeah. Um, I could add more background. Yeah. So I really like the wave. I like how the wave is, is in her shape. Um, I think that's fun. The other, the other hard part with this is, and again, I know where you're shooting, so I, I know that's limitation, but pulling the subject even further from the background to give, to give yourself more room to do that. Again, I know it's gonna be hard where you are, but um, you know, this pose maybe isn't the right pose for that space then. Maybe something where she's sitting, holding her legs, something where she's more direct at you because that she you know in this case it's like four feet wide you know on background paper that becomes difficult um, so some of that is just working with what you have and, and posing with what you have if I had more time I probably would have worked on this some as well I didn't feel like dealing with that um, skin AI software does not do well with gels um, I use portrait pro if I have a gelled photo it does not like it very much it gives me crazy results so that's a, that's a very manual process here as well right um, you know, I've fixed this part right here. There's a little bit there. That's just cause I shifted the color so much. Um, you know, I, I would work on that a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe like her back turned to you just a little bit, right? Just looking over that shoulder to give a little bit smaller so that you're not, you're not getting that. Your shots are then inside the frame of the background paper in some way. Um, yeah, it's tough. And the model speaks Russian. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, and that's and that's fine. But again, like, been slight bend in the elbow, like that that bothers me a lot. And then like, that bothers me too. But that'd be more of a lean back to you know as she leans back her shoulders to elongate there, little things like that. Um, posing posing is hard. Um, I it's it's probably my biggest still weakness. Like the thing I need to work on the most is still posing. Um, I feel like I don't always have great ideas and solutions for every situation. All right, Kier, last photo. What was the shot on? What? The, Camera? Um, 
what was it called? It was the one that Daniel got me for. Um, Medium format, 120 film? Uh, yeah, it was, it was 120. Cool. It was the... That's okay. It's okay. That's fine. It was 105 lens. I know it was 105 So what's funny about this photo is this structure right here, I've been paid to photograph by the toll road. <laughs> I know exactly where this is. Nice. I I shot their uh, annual report cover photo like right here. <laughs> That's why I picked this photo because I think it's funny. Uh, this is like MLK in 183. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah, we there's picked a, a random location to go to. We were just doing like a photo walk so I could test the camera out before my wedding. There's a great tunnel here right at this place. It would make a really good long lens portrait. Just throwing that out there if anybody wants to try it. It's, it, it's, it's really neat, especially at twilight because you get like blue skies and like golden light. It's really neat. Anyway, right there. MLK and 183 on the toll. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so I love this because I know the toll road's there. And so a broken down car with no tires next to the toll road makes me laugh. Um, I'm guessing this is like what a Buick LeSabre? Is that what it is? Yeah, it is. Um, but what I think makes this photo is this line right here. Because this line comes to the back of the car. And then we kind of go in a spiral there. Um, shooting square crop in camera. I think is a great practice for people like me who shoot three by two all day long, right? So in camera, you can actually set your cameras to shoot different crops. I think it's a great exercise in learning different composition um, and not always just a faulting to three by two. That's why I love it. That's right. why I want to. I'm not saying you have to shoot all your photos that way, but just one day, set your camera to four by three, set it to 16 by nine, set it to one by one and try to shoot and work with different constraints to expand your creative muscles right i think that's a great and if you notice in those scans we have look at the reds see how we have all the reds in the shadows we kind of have blues in the highlights again so if we're looking to mimic film tones that color grading can really come out as a way to kind of mimic that older vintage feel if we wanted to throw some reds in the shadows throw some blues on the highlights play with the mid-tones you can get some really interesting things going on but yeah i'd recommend shooting with not always three by two, just as a way to kind of force yourself to work with different, right? Claire, you paint, do you always paint the exact same aspect ratio? Right. And so it forces you to come up with different compositions that fit the thing you're painting on or shooting on. Um, so that's why I like this one to kind of talk about. I would make that just like, there you go. Um, a lot of photos that people take are two degrees to the right, because as they push the shutter button, the camera turns. And so I've had some friends that I want to put a heel lift in the right shoe because every photo they give me is like two degrees to the right. And I want to give them a heel lift so they shoot level again. What's up, Jeff? Uh, How you doing, Mr. Hammond? That camera is also like, when it's like a top-down view, yeah. so I have to like counter it in a weird way. If you ever shoot with a Rolleiflex, I don't recommend shooting it drunk. Because <laughs> looking down and it twists in a weird way, you'll fall over or throw up. Ask me how I know. Um, we'll see what, when I come back to my Yeah, there you go. I'm pretty so yeah, what's up everyone? Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for everybody joining. Oh my gosh. Let's go back to that. Yay. Anyway, thanks for everybody joining. It's year three now, episode 32 of Josh Says Mean Things. And we're drinking. We're having a good time. Y'all have a good time. Go out and take photos. See y'all.